Yeah, well, um, hi everyone. It's, uh, yeah, it's a real pleasure introducing my good friend, Professor Klaus Rutenberg. Um, and it's, it's, an, it's an honor to kick off this uh, Philosophy of Chemistry seminar with Klaus. Um, Klaus was one of the founding fathers, I would say, of the Philosophy of Chemistry some 30 years ago, I guess, by now. Um, and since then, he has carved out his uh, very own research style in philosophy of chemistry, which has always been very inspired by the history of chemistry, especially 19th century chemistry. Um, he's one of the great experts on Punnett, uh, Ostwald, Wald, all of them were philosophers of chemistry avant la lettre, you could say. Um, and all of that culminated recently in um, his book, Chemie Philosophie, um, which is going deeply into uh, philosophy of chemistry. But as you will see, and I, I'm sure you'll notice it during this book as well, Klaus is not easily swayed by reductionist arguments uh, or by the essentialist uh, arguments of metaphysicians. He's someone who sticks very closely to um, the empirical side of chemistry. Uh, is very interested in what substances and stuff are. Um, so, and he's about to tell us um, more about catalysis, which is a huge topic in chemistry, one of the more important topics in chemistry, which has earned uh, a lot of Nobel Prizes recently. And yet there is little to no research done uh, from a philosophical perspective on the whole topic of catalysis. So this is going to be, um, yeah, I think a start uh, to, to some exciting new research on catalysis. So Klaus, the floor is yours. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm happy to be back in Belgium. It was not really easy to get here because of the, of the German uh, trains, <laughs> uh, especially the very, very fast trains never uh, come uh, to, the, to the destination, at least not in time. Um, yeah, and I think the most important things um, Peter has said already, um, I have been here in Belgium, not in Louvain, but in Leuven. Uh, in 26, I think, and worked with Jaap van Brakel. Maybe some of you know him. Uh, hopefully, some of you know him. Um, Jaap van Brakel was the host of a, of a bigger um, project. Project was with us as well on stuff. Also, that means on chemical substances. And um, since then, I've been um, back um, four or five times. But this is the first time here, uh, and uh, the first time, I must admit, uh, in the French-speaking part of Belgium. Um, okay, so I can uh, begin, hopefully. Um, it's not a, so to say, um, it's a, so, so to say, all work in progress, as many of uh, the seminar titles, hopefully. Uh, so uh, there are no results, in a way, which you, which you can um, take with you as takeaway uh, messages. Um, but let's see. Um, strangely, I'm reading something um, because my English is not so fluent as yours, but maybe you were born there, <laughs> where, where the people speak English. Um, strangely, that is the beginning now, the recent philosophy of chemistry lacks any detailed studies of catalysis, a process uh, who, whose technical applications continue to greatly affect our daily life and which has been researched at enormous cost for more than a century now in the chemical sciences. This deficiency cannot be remedied in uh, its entirety here, of course. However, I would like to draw your attention to a few critical or crucial aspects. What does a chemical reaction um, tell, tell you or tell us? Or what does a chemical reaction equation tell us? Um, just as a warm-up. One should always check on whether everything is um, to be seen for the others as well. Um, this is um, the equation we are writing down for the process of uh, bringing together the elements uh, nitrogen and hydrogen. For those who are not so familiar with chemistry, but may, many or may hopefully or all of you have seen some uh, uh, similar things. And 
now we could uh, ask what does that um, reaction equation uh, tells us. Um, it's uh, okay, um, clear what I said uh, already, um, it's nitrogen and hydrogen um, in a certain um, proportion of amounts uh, reacting to ammonia. Um, by the way, we, are, we will be talking about, we will uh, have referred to that um, process um, again uh, later. Um, so keep that maybe in mind. In, uh, in the first place, you could mean, okay, um, obviously there is a way to make ammonia, NH3, um, from nitrogen and hydrogen. And, and we um, as well know um, how many atoms, if you like, or how many um, moles um, of those substances have to be put together to uh, yield uh, uh, two moles of ammonia. So that looks pretty algebraic and pretty um, deterministic, uh, to, to use a, a philosophical word. Um, but uh, then you might ask, and the, the, the professionals uh, do ask, yeah, in which um, state, uh, which aggregate state, we uh, would need those uh, elements, <laughs> and then you would come up uh, with an um, equation like uh, the upper one, so uh, this upper um, reaction equation tells us that we have to use, or that we can use, um, those elements in the gaseous uh, state, and it will uh, yield some amount of ammonia as well in the gaseous state. So um, if we um, examine in the laboratory, examine th uh, that process using nitrogen and hydrogen, um, we will come up with a result that even if um, the reaction is over, at least to our senses over, um, we would um, still uh, measure some amount of the um, educts of hydrogen and nitrogen in uh, th this case. And um, therefore, um, people in the 19th century, uh, Guldberg and Waage, maybe you have heard of those people uh, who were um, inventing uh, the, uh, the theory um, of mass action, which is, um, by the way, unfortunately translated into German as um, Theorie der Massenwirkung, which is wrong, uh, because it's not the Massenwirkung uh, if you take mass as the physical uh, uh, notion, um, because here is meant amount, not mass. Um, so uh, that is uh, a tr critical thing because um, some philosophers, uh, even philosophers of science, do um, interpret um, that uh, theory of mass action um, as uh, being something different than um, the chemists do think. Here, I, in the second line, I'm um, referring to the uh, equilibration of this um, process. So at a certain stage, this process might be, um, so to say, quiet, might be um, not working anymore, because we are not sensing, uh, looking, or maybe even measuring uh, some other uh, movement in, 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 the in the mixture of those uh, material. So we have to keep in mind that no chemical um, reaction, not only this one here, um, that no uh, chemical re reaction is uh, really finished when we think it is finished. It is never finished. It is uh, always uh, uh, forward and backward at the same time. And we can, that this is our possibility, we can um, measure those um, substances and put them in, in the proportion. This proportion is here um, uh, shown as the, the partial um, pressure of those substances and uh, the proportion uh, leads to what we call uh, the, uh, the equilib equilibrium constant. This is the car. Okay. Hence, chemical reactions do inform us at best roughly about the involved substances and again roughly about educts and products. In real equilibria, however, chemical processes do not reach an end, as I told, told you, as I said already. In other words, chemical determinism 
can by no means be realized. We have to keep that in mind um, when we meet uh, deterministic uh, analytical philosophers. Um, if they talk, talk about uh, free will, they, they do as if, or they pretend as if, everything that happens in the brain, normally they are talking about the brain, there are other things um, going on in the, in the body, maybe some of you know of course, better, better than me. Um, um, even very uh, easy um, equations, easy processes, are not really uh, deterministic. Um, this is my main um, question uh, here in, uh, in that uh, maybe 45 minutes. Whereas the art of experimentation does not have unlimited influence on, on the results of a synthesis, uh, one can affect the path and rate of the re reaction by manipulating the reaction conditions. Slowing down a reaction, that would be um, called or could be called a sort of negative catalysis, you mm -hmm. can think about that later. Uh, slowing down a reaction is always possible in principle. Always. In principle, at least. But uh, can the opposite be achieved as well? How is it possible to accelerate a reaction? This is the question um, those colleagues uh, in the research of catalysis are asking all the time. Uh, is it possible and how is it possible? The fundamental idea is obvious and maybe even simple. If the distance between the reactants slows down the reaction, then they must be brought together more often per unit of time in order to accelerate the reaction. And the collision of particles uh, of the reactants is a prerequisite of realizing the reaction. Chemistry is always happening at the same place. Uh, um, those e-ducts um, and maybe uh, even the products uh, have to be at the same uh, place in, in space, at the same spot, so to say. Whereas the chemical thermodynamics largely does not require submicroscopic images, modern chemical kinetics that is the field in which temporality is the central notion, the notion of time is um, the question there, immediately launches conceptually into the submicroscopic range. That is, uh, the kinetics, chemical kinetics, are um, uh, only um, possible if we are thinking um, of um, particles. Um, and yet, the empirical point of departure, as always in chemistry, is the phenomenology of substance. Of the four state vari variables, pressure, volume, temperature, and quantity of substance, which by the way are closely linked to the concept of substance, everything, of, uh, everything like pressure, volume, temperature, and the quantity of substance as well, of course, have to do with um, substances. The temperature has the best chances um, of influencing the reaction. Yeah? The, in the first place, you think of temperature, uh, increasing temperature, and hope that um, uh, such a reaction would be um, accelerated. A rule of thumb, which we use um, not every day, but um, in many uh, versions, um, says that the temperature increase of 10 degrees will double the reaction velocity. Uh, this is not really um, ex uh, actually uh, correct, but it, it is normally uh, the way um, we are thinking, we as chemists are thinking of um, uh, increasing the, um, the velocity of chemical processes. The category of time for describing chemical reactions <coughs> bless you. Uh, was in introduced relatively late uh, in the second half of the 19th century. Uh, the more precise study of reaction rates and curses, that is, the emergence of the branch of chemical kinetics, uh, brought with it the development of notions about the processes we call catalytic. Catalysis uh, in chemistry describes a phenomenon whereby a reaction is accelerated by a substance that itself does not occur in the reaction equation. You maybe knew that already. Wilhelm Ostwald, I will be talking about him because I know him quite, not him personally, but his work <laughs> um, um, quite well, um, I think uh, at least, uh, honored with the 1909 Nobel Prize for his work, except, uh, ex 
exceptionally in uh, this field, aptly summarizes the phenomenon nearly a decade later. There it is. Hopefully you can read it. Um, in many cases, the rate uh, change from the presence of such substances is slight. In others, very significant. In certain cases, even almost imme immeasurably small amounts of foreign substances <coughs> are enough to increase the rate to several multiples of its initial value or reduce it to a small fraction of it. Again, the redu reduction, you see the uh, decreasing velocity is possible. The term, um, I mean the term catalysis, uh, was introduced around 1835 already by Jöns Jakob Berzelius, uh, a Swedish uh, chemist, with enormous uh, influence, who identified the phenomenon. He describes it as different from conventional chemical affinity and suspects that its nature is not dissimilar to the known electrochemical relationships. He was talking, uh, he loved to, be, to talk about electrochemical relationships, by the way. As so often in chemistry, when the success of an application has highest priority, the term catalysis and even initial applications had become accepted long before the infusion of an appropriate theory. Uh, the more familiar early applications of technical significance include the production of sulfuric acid from a sulfurous acid by means of nitrous acid or nitrogen oxide, acid catalyzed reactions in organic chemistry, the breakdown of starch into sugar in the presence of acids, the oxidation of combustible gases on heated platinum, and also the oxyhydrogen reaction on the so-called platinum sponge at room temperature, um, which became famous by Döber Einer's Land. Maybe you have seen that in some museum. That is uh, uh, a piece of, of platinum, um, and if you put um, hydrogen and oxygen into that um, bottle, it will flame up and, and uh, give a sort of lamp, if you like. Uh, what these reactions have in common is that certain substances, here in that case platinum, uh, certain substances influence the process without themselves being consumed. It was soon noticed uh, that this phenomenon is very specific and that not every substance can influence any random reaction. However, there was no catalytic affinity theory at that time, 1835. Basilius gave the phenomenon a name, but made, it, made no attempt to postulate a theory. Nonetheless, he spoke of an intrinsic force and suspected that given, giving a name would be helpful to further research. As early as 1834 already, Eilhard Mitscherlich, who had been with Berzelius, uh, as a postdoctoral student, and uh, since 1822 was a professor in Berlin, had introduced the expression contact reaction for describing the acceleration of a reaction. Basilius criticized, criticizes uh, the latter with the argument that contact between substances is necessary for all chemical processes, and the term contact reaction is therefore not sufficiently specific. Yet the term catalysis also has its, drawback, its drawbacks. The German translation, uh, Zersetzung, many of you uh, read and understand German, um, almost all the Belgians, although I know one Belgian who pretends not to speak German, <laughs> we, never, we never spoke a German word together. And, and he knows how good I am in English. <laughs> um, additionally, um, a literal interpretation uh, places the term overly close to the decompositional meaning of an oh, I, I missed, uh, Zersetzung means decomposition, of course. Yeah, and additionally, um, a literal interpretation places the term overly close to the decompositional meaning of analysis, like cutting into pieces analysis, uh, which uh, has no, nothing to do with um, analytical chemistry, by the way. Uh, this analytical chemistry is not just cutting into pieces is just much more. Thus, it is more the power of personal influence and not the intrinsic conceptual power of persuasion that is behind the general acceptance of this expression. 
we find uh, those examples uh, in many places uh, in the history of science, of course. Um, Friedrich Wöhler invested a lot of effort and um, time uh, in explaining to his friend uh, Liebig, Justus Liebig, maybe you know him, have heard of him, uh, then to his friend Liebig, the ideas of a Swedish teacher, and in attempting to turn him away from the reproach of a new vis occulta, or vis vitalis, something like this. Yet his efforts met with little success. Oswald later stood by Berzelius. They were friends, um, at least friendly. Although he himself missed no opportunity, Oswald no opportunity to criticize theoretical speculations poorly supported by empirical findings and he, in his own work, usually tended not to venture into theory, as with the affinity studies early in his career. He started, Ostrad started with uh, affinity studies, and um, even the Nobel Prize was in part given to him uh, because of his um, works um, in his doctoral thesis, uh, even 30 years ago. In Grundriss der Allgemeinchemie, I think I missed that one, um, um, quite early, 1899, as you can see, he says something about Liebig as well. Liebig was not his friend. They, they were uh, fighting all the time. Um, maybe not, hopefully not personally, but uh, in, in their works. Um, I'm just reading the, the yellow uh, part here. Liebig assumed that uh, a substance in decomposition or chemical motion can communicate its chemical motion to another that is present and not decomposing and thereby bring that uh, substance to decomposition. So Liebig has, has another metaphysical idea, um, which uh, Ostwald didn't like. According to Ostwald, the uh, broad apparent explanation of the instigation hypothesis um, of Liebig has had no success other than to delay the study of the problem for half a century. Um, uh, in other places as well, Ostwald um, accused Liebig to be, uh, so to say, some um, tremor in a way, uh, to be just um, decreasing the, uh, the progress of chemistry, which is maybe uh, right in some um, um, parts and um, totally wrong in other. Liebig finds the idea of force inappropriate and replaces it with another, as you have seen, speculative notion, which presumably comes from comparison with fermentation processes. Oswald assumes that the cause of a substance change is a chemical potential um, that is in thermodynamic terms negative free entropy, uh, as we would put it today. Um, consequently, he feels the instigation hypothesis is not conclusive. In his view, a chemical process is already underway, albeit immeasurably slowly. So Oswald uh, claims that every any uh, chemical uh, process, if the substances are there in, in one room, um, is already um, starting from the beginning on, without um, maybe our um, recognition. Another guy, Alvin Mittasch, uh, a quite funny photo, but I just wanted to show you at least one photo of each. Um, Alvin Mittasch, who studied under Ostwald, he even heard his uh, philosophical um, lectures in Leipzig, and received his doctorate under Bodenstein, which is another quite um, well-known chemist under the in, in the group of the histor historians of chemistry. Um, and Mittasch argues in his writings um, on the philosophy of chemistry for another interpretation, a different interpretation, um, um, different from uh, 
what his teacher was saying. For him, the catalytic effect is an occasioning, initiating or actuating causality. In his writings, uh, we find a scientific and methodological standpoint that is extremely rare among chemists, that is this one. Uh, the classification of catalysis within the study of reaction kinetics is a matter of science. Its epistemological classification within the whole of nature's causal relationships is a matter of philosophy. And maybe he is right on that. Yet it is noteworthy that this philosophical work has primarily been undertaken by men who were natural scientists and not specialized philosophers. This is quite interesting. Um, Peter was um, telling you that uh, we have a, a quite, uh, e quite new, still new group uh, of philosophers of chemistry since um, the beginning of the 90s, of the last uh, century. And almost all of them, um, like me, like Peter as well, uh, are, although you, you have not been, uh, yeah, where have you been in the 90s? Um, um, it's, it's still correct what he's saying here. Um, Mittasch does not give very good remarks to the community of specialized philosophers uh, of his day uh, when it comes to chemical or catalytic causality. However, this is hardly surprising because in his day uh, there were very few philosophers who had developed enough interest in chemistry as a reference site. And therefore, a few chemists have, uh, of necessity, become active in the philosophy of chemistry themselves. It is also interesting to note that the research interests among the handful of academic philosophers, there are some, uh, who were initially chemists, usually have little to do with chemistry. Uh, uh, at least, uh, I think, five, uh, that I know, five uh, uh, people who studied chemistry and then went into uh, philosophy. Um, the indirect, I must say, uh, the, the dispute um, between uh, Ostwald and Mittasch as indirect has ever been, uh, always been, indirect. dispute between Mittasch, the proponent of the catalytic actuation thesis, and Ostwald, the thermodynamicist, is not merely one of words. Ostwald rejects the causal influence of the catalyst as a driving force categorically. Yeah? He says there is no uh, causal um, influence of, uh, on the, the process only by just uh, pushing it um, uh, into, into line, so to say. Mittasch, who played a crucial role in developing the catalytic synthesis of ammonia, we have seen uh, the equations already, and therefore very well knows um, what he is talking about. It does not mean only his actuation thesis, only, only his uh, actuation thesis. Rather, he would like to consider both elements, the driving force <coughs> and the actuation effect, as an integrated whole. As we have uh, seen, no substance permutation is actually complete. No uh, chemical process is complete. Um, the notion we, we can say, or we can just uh, talk about and negotiate and say, no, it's, uh, we think it's complete, but uh, if you look closely, no um, process is complete, if it is really a process. The notion of an infinitesimal reaction rate prior to contact with the catalyst thus cannot be excluded. Uh, Ostwald might be um, correct in certain uh, cases we can even measure that, uh, uh, although we cannot see um, very, very, very well that there's uh, uh, a process going on, um, we can measure uh, um, if we are good in analytical chemistry. Oswald is not wrong in this regard, but he does not see the whole process. Let us consider a non-chemical example, uh, uh, very simple example. A brick lying on the edge of a roof, the potential that pulls the brick down uh, can be easily quantified if we multiply mass, height, and acceleration due to gravity. gravity. We, all, uh, we all, of, all of us learned that in school. And by equating uh, this potential energy with kinetic energy, we can also predict the speed at which the brick uh, will hit the ground when it falls. Okay? 
all of us can do that easily. Uh, thus, we would understand the cause and even some of the future events. Yet the crucial point that Mitosh describes better in the corresponding chemical case is this. We do not know if or when the brick will leave the edge of the roof. That is this uh, point, so to say. We do not know when that will happen. If we talk only, if we only talk about um, the equilibrium, we, uh, we are giving a sort of um, description that is not um, complete. Comprehending potentiality is necessary but not sufficient for a comprehensive description and explanation of the processing. This is really important for, again. Comprehending potentiality is necessary but not sufficient for a comprehensive description and explanation of the process. What I just said is, uh, is the sentence you should uh, use if, if uh, you are talk to quantum physicists. Yeah? Because you know, some of them are, uh, are thinking quantum um, theory is just f fallen out of the blue some, somewhere. And uh, it's, it's very, very important for everything. But if you, if you cannot, if you can um, describe as only, um, so to say, the pot potentiality which the Schrödinger uh, equation is doing, um, you do so one thing that is important and, and nice, but you, you are not describing, you are not able to describe any chemical process, any biological thing, and so on. And, so on. Um, and to speak here of an actuation causality, as Mittasch understands it, does not necessarily include the claim of causation. Yeah, to, to put that, um, that brick uh, down to earth, it's, it's not, it's, it's maybe some people would say that's the causation. No, the causation, and that is uh, correct with Ostwald, and the causation is, is just the gravi gravi gravity that pulls uh, that uh, stone down. Um, it is surprising that even after having received Nobel honors, in good part for his catalytic investigations, I told you that there are other parts as well, um, Oswald admits to be not yet clear about the nature of catalysis here in the fifth edition of his Rundriss der Allgemeinen Chemie. That's not quite, I'm sorry. That's one. Um, catalysis, maybe only the first line, has not yet been scientifically explored in great detail because despite its importance and despite its having been known for about a hundred years, that is from 1917, um, uh, it has only recently begun to be studied systematically. The yellow ones, as regards the previously accepted laws of catalysis, it should, be, uh, should first be emphasized that this is a very general phenomenon. No, this, that is, is, is his claim even later that this uh, is maybe a phenomenon that, that we cannot just put aside when we are talking about uh, chemistry as a whole. The, the other one, the other yellow uh, part, yet no general law has yet uh, been found that expresses specific relationships between the type of reaction and that of the catalyst. Here we are. Oh, maybe the last one as well. Uh, meanwhile, precisely the last sentence, um, precisely the cases have suggested a theory uh, which in many cases have proven in essence to be correct. It consists uh, in the assumption of an intermediate reaction. Intermediate reaction. Uh, uh, here of a, uh, a, a claim or a sentence that is uh, uttered by a phen phenomenon. Phenomena, phenomenalist, chemist, and philosopher. Here we are reading the writings of Wilhelm Ostwald, who, by his own standards, is leaning pretty far out of the window. For a long time, he applied his eloquence and influence in fending off speculative theoretical entities. And although his conversion to atomism is a modernistic fairy tale, well, we have to be very, very um, uh, yeah, very uh, clear that um, okay, there is one um, 
mentioning in the, in the, in the foreword of one of his textbooks, but he, he never um, changed his, his, his mind to atomistic um, ideas. Never. But here, I, w I must admit, so to say, as a, as a sort of anti-atomist or non-atomist, um, the notion of intermediate reactions uh, or even intermediate stages that uh, one can detect empirically only indirectly or even not at all is something he would have rejected categorically earlier, some years before. That. However, in today's chemistry, in which theoretical and manifest entities are more or less treated equally, uh, the so-called theory of the transitional state uh, is the accepted model. As was mentioned, Osberg prefers the acceleration concept to the actuation concept, which is why he does not use an expression that, uh, such as activation energy. Although uh, the activation energy was invented by a friend of him, uh, Arrhenius, we'll have a look at, at this equation in a, in a minute, um, he, he never talked about um, activation energy, Ostwald, which is quite interesting, if not strange. Actuation cannot occur without expanding energy, however. Kicking uh, the brick may cost only a small amount of energy, but it is a necessary amount despite the fact that it, that it does not appear in the energy balance of the process in question. Uh, this line of thought also makes it clear that the uh, dispute, again di direct, indirect uh, dispute between Ostwald and Wittersch is attributable to the difference in how they view the system. That is more uh, theoretically, uh, a theoretical idea. Ostwald assumes a closed system, an inertial, inertial uh, system, that allows an exchange of neither substances or energy. Mittersch's uh, conception um, allows uh, the controlling intervention uh, of the catalyst by contact from outside. So they have, they have in mind maybe two uh, um, different models, as I think. Whereas Ostwald in his own studies almost exclusively, exclusively observed homogeneous systems, uh, that is gases and solutions, Mittasch uh, at BASF, at the company BASF, BASF, I'm sorry, had researched um, uh, systems um, that develop uh, the heterogeneous catalysts, I'm sorry, and gas reactions by solid bodies, especially the synthesis of ammonia, for many years. Uh, these different lines of work, doubtlessly, had no small influence on these researchers' choice of their respective theoretical interpretation. Uh, the actuation um, conception correlates very well with the activation energy. Here is one uh, version of the equation of uh, Arrhenius, where you can see this Ea, that is the act activation energy, Today we would say activation enthalpy, but it's almost the same. Um, in modern chemical uh, uh, kinetics, yes, <laughs> that's what, what, I, what I thought when I saw this <laughs> for the first time. It's but it's it's worth a Nobel Prize. Eh? It's um, um, part of, of a description of, uh, of Gerhard Ertel, who won the Nobel Prize for the um, introduction, uh, yeah, for the um, inter interpreting um, the, the processes um, of the ammonia uh, synthesis in uh, or at a, a catalyst, catalyst and so on. Um, these energy diagrams, like the, the one you can see here, um, show in partial steps with, um, um, with amounts, which amounts of energy are required uh, to achieve a certain th synthetic goal. For example, forming ammonia from the elements first requires breaking down the starting molecules. So now we, we know much better how those processes are going on. Although we are making in large amounts uh, ammonia in the industry uh, since the, the 1910s. This is the second uh, decade of the, the last uh, century. But we, but no one, 
do exactly what is going on there. Under standard conditions, the exothermic and exergonic uh, reaction is unfortunately very slow. Uh, but increasing the temperature shifts the e equilibrium situation unfavorably. It was discovered that significantly increasing the pressure improved the yield, particularly because this made it possible to achieve the high temperatures necessary for any catalytic effective, uh, effectiveness. Uh, without catalysts, enormous amounts of activation energy would be necessary, whereas with the catalyst, first developed primarily by Mittasch, only far smaller barriers have uh, to be overcome. So this is um, the, uh, the, the result of um, a work of maybe 30 years or so in the Fritz Haber Institute in Berlin, by mainly the group of Gerhard uh, Erfeld. Um, the first few of um, a whole series of ab absorption processes, you can see here, um, everything that is um, downward um, uh, listed, has some some uh, indices, indices um, like at and so on. That means all these uh, particles are uh, 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 sitting on on the surface, and um, this is quite interesting. That, uh, that that could happen. No one could just um, know or predict that that would happen. Yeah? The the cat catalysts uh, catalysts um, which were used in uh, in the industrial processing, um, we have found, um, by the way, um, by trial and error. Because we had no theory, we could not just uh, predict which uh, catalyst would be working, which uh, other catalyst would not be working. So, uh, and, and I have the impression that um, the, lot of the modern catalyst, uh, cat catalyst uh, um, research is still something like Increasing the temperature cannot increase the reaction rate and thus the yield in every case, although we think that uh, per 10 uh, degrees we have uh, 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 um, the doubling of the the um, velocity. Um, in some cases it's not uh, possible. Increasing the temperature cannot increase the reaction rate and thus the yield in every case and to any desired extent. In the best case, heating uh, leads to an autocatalysis as increasing the total number of collisions also increases the number of effective collisions that result in the product. Yet it is important to understand the application framework um, in his article über die Reichweite des Auslösungsbegriffs, Mittasch, again, Ivy Mittasch, says something that hopefully will occur. In chemistry, it is primarily the range of um, medium and low temperatures in which the actuation and directionality due to various influences play a major role. As chemical impediments continuously decrease with increasing temperature, the reaction rate increases greatly. Uh, one will hardly find any chemical reactions of the usual sort at 2000 degrees Celsius, but all the more so in the lower temperature ranges in which people normally observe and perform chemical reactions. This, um, I think, is, is a crucial specification of the catalysis concept and um, essentially of chemistry as a whole. Uh, at extremely high temperatures, every substance disintegrates, and if no more chemical reactions are possible, then it is obviously pointless to talk of actuation and acceleration. Mittasch, as well as the Nobel Prize winners Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch, could hardly imagine what exactly the reaction mechanism looks like and why their ammonia synthesis was successful. That is um, the situation we have always in chemistry. Yeah? It's a normal situation. The mechanism was only deciphered with modern methods, methods of surface examination, Gerhard Ertel. I showed you the picture of his work. 
In this case, too, the practical success preceded the scientific knowledge. And now, a sort of um, excursion. Uh, normally, we should not do excursions after, uh, just at the end of a talk, because people are, are, are sleeping in a way. And, um, yeah, okay. Um, I'll show you the other guy as well. Uh, this is from a, from a small uh, booklet um, uh, written by Alvin Mittasch. Uh, Wilhelm Ostwalds Auslösung, Auflösung, ja, yeah, Auslösungslehre, sorry, it's Auslösungslehre, Attenuation. And there he, um, um, Mittasch puts uh, the picture of Ostwald uh, into uh, that book. And it's quite interesting because Ostwald, as I told you, had no Auslösungslehre, he was just uh, on the other side. But okay, and now it, it is um, uh, Ostwald, uh, or it is Ostwald's turn. Um, undoubtedly, to the surprise of some attendees, physical chemist Wilhelm Ostwald addresses uh, this topic, uh, the chemical theory of free will, um, at the meeting of the mathematical physical chemists of the Royal Saxon Society of the Sciences in Leipzig um, on the 3rd December. Uh, 3rd of December in 1894, 1894, as I said, almost, uh, he was professor uh, already, but he was still quite young. However, he does, Ostman does not expound a full, fully developed theory of free will, for he devotes only about the last tenth of the printed version of the lecture to philosophical questions. Um, uh, anyways, it's interesting to, to have a look at this very small uh, paper. The connection with the uh, present talk arises from the concept of catalysis. Oswald begins his lecture uh, with a discussion of the relationship between energy and time. He says the only form of energy that does not allow any temporal freedom is kinetic energy. Yeah. And then he says, As on the other hand, the proposition that all natural occurrences are sufficiently determined is a required postulate. Sufficiently determined, what does that mean? Um, it must follow uh, that aside from the known laws of energetics and the law of the exceptional case, one uh, or more other laws are present by which the temporal cause of the processes is clearly determined even in those cases in which the energy conditions do not include any temporal determination. Such laws have hardly been so sought, um, much less found. Finally, uh, Ostwald reshapes his uh, previously pessimistic depiction of research into the outlook that progress will indeed eventually reveal these laws. Wherever, um, whereas, I'm sorry, there was no lack of good intentions in the last decade of the 19th century, this uh, hardly altered the fundamental situation that Oswald himself knows nearly a quarter of a century later in his Grundriss der Allgemeinen Chemie. Maybe only the yellow one. First, he is uh, saying um, it could be that, uh, that uh, the kinetic um, part of, uh, of uh, science is, is, is the more fundamental one, but then uh, uh, the, the more important thing, uh, at least. Uh, if I'm, as far as I'm concerned, um, is the yellow. On the other hand, it has not been possible to uh, establish a general principle which would provide information about the field in a similar manner as the various equi equilibrium principles based on the generalization of the second law of thermodynamics to for chemical statics. statics. Um, this is quite interesting for those people who think that uh, Oswald um, Turned to atomistic um, thinking and uh, working. Um, he, he is recognizing that there is some um, good work done um, in, the, in the kinetics, but then he says oh, what I was just reading. Um, and I must say, this situation um, that we are uh, still, uh, 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 still is, uh, uh, it 
difference between uh, thermodynamics and kinetics in chemistry um, is uh, still persisting, it's still there. As chemical uh, kinetics lacks the artifice uh, of equilibrium, there is no equilibrium, and the additivity of energy forms, every individual experimental approach has to be studied separately. Function. That means there is no theory of, uh, of kinetics. There's some disc uh, description of uh, material, but no theory to predict uh, th uh, the things that are really uh, interesting in the chemistry. Not to predict th some things I can think of uh, as a theoretist uh, on, on the green table. Precise predictions or advanced calculations of reaction rates, that is what I said, of actual chemical processes, preferable, pre preferably even up initio, <coughs> are not possible. Still, not possible. And um, this, um, I'm saying, um, not not because I'm just um, fighting against uh, the codecs in the chemistry, but it's uh, it's really necessary to to talk about, uh, so to say, the meaning of um, of our uh, notions. And, uh, this is all one uh, point of it. In his Leipzig lecture, that on free will, Oswald used uh, the expression actuation phenomenon for examples, actuation phenomenon, for examples like explosions. Yet, he avoids the term actuation in the sense of causation um, of a substance. You see. That is uh, quite interesting. At this point in time, he is fundamentally energetic, his fundamentally energetic attitude has already become predominant so that one can speak of an ontological determinism, to put it more philosophically. The origin of all natural processes is energetically determined. However, if and when uh, this outcome, that means equilibrium, is established remains indeterminate. This makes it possible, that is a quote, possible to conceive of a structure determined by natural law in which even with the same initial states a different course occurs in that influences are at work that do require any finite expenditure of energy and work to be exhibited." Unquote. A second postulate um, he gives here is closely related to uh, the identity thesis um, that is also discussed in the contemporary philosophy of mind. Yeah? Identity of, of, of mind and body, so to say. Um, to, to put it very short. Um, quote, Ostwald, we may regard all mental processes as inseparably linked to material and particularly chemical ones. Yeah? Unquote. Ostwald formulates the third postulate which uh, in the present context is of pivotal importance as an implication. That should be that one. Therefore, if man, if human beings, has a means of bringing to bear catalytic effects in the course of the chemical processes linked with the mental ones, then he thus has the possibility of accelerating or decelerating these mental processes. Träumen weiter, I would say, in general. Uh, yeah. If where several processes are simultaneously possible, for example, a primarily instinctive one and a consciously intended one, Oswald sees the possibility that the latter will maintain primacy because the psychophysical processes he sees as required are accelerated and all the competing processes are decelerated. In Ostwald's thinking, the fundamental ontological determinism stipulated by energetics is thus joined by an epistemological internal indeterminism. That's the second one here. Um, it is in this possibility of controlling the speed of the psychic processes, even though their occurrence is determined by natural law, uh, that is to say energetically, that I now see the source of our sensation of free will. As is hardly surprising when a substance scientist, a chemist, ventures so briefly and abruptly into philosophy, unanswered questions remain. 
uh, what could the willful control of substance catalysts look like? Which catalysts uh, can be willfully utilized and which cannot? Are not biosynthesis and biochemistry si similarly determined? And so on. Nonetheless, I would like to emphasize one aspect that is not unimportant. Um, the claim put forward in past and current philosophical debates that sensations and expressions of will are physically and chemically determined has uh, usually made use of a cliché-ridden and often distorted de uh, depiction of chemistry and biochemistry. In this depiction, chemical reactions have a clear beginning and a defined end and are complete. Indeed, one can formulate, uh, as, as we have seen, equations uh, like algebraic perfection, perfect, perfect, perfect um, versions. The law of mass action um, is overlooked, it's overlooked normally, or only applied to those partial steps currently under discussion. Everything that occurs is clearly defined and seems to have a predetermined goal. In this regard, Oswald's idea of shedding light uh, on the kinetic catalytic influence on human actions seems to me to be not only innovative in his day and age, but still current enough to enrich the debates I mentioned. Other important uh, natural scientists have also weighed in on the topic of free will, as you may know. For example, uh, in a thought experiment, James Clark Maxwell arrives at a similar conclusion um, to Ostwald, that is an epistemologically based free will with ontological determinism. However, he follows an atomistic mechanistic path, which uh, Ostwald was not fond of. Uh, there is also a lecture um, by Max Planck uh, with the title The Law of Causality and Free Will, which he held in uh, 1923. Interestingly, <coughs> Here he emphasizes the inaccessibility uh, of the human inner self, a notion similarly argued much later by the American philosopher Thomas Nagel. Uh, I'm reading that, uh, I think, owner, uh, I'm not sorry, without uh, giving you uh, the possibility to, to read with me. Indeed, there is a plank, Max Planck. Indeed, there is a point, one single point in the wide, immeasurable world of nature and mind, which is and always will be not only practically but also logically inaccessible to every science and therefore also to every causal observation. This point is one's own self. Yes. That should be almost my, my last um, slide. This, as you can see, is uh, again Alvin Mittasch. Mm, the opponent, so to say, of, of uh, Ostwald here. Um, and he, interestingly, um, tried himself to, to put uh, this situation of, of mind and body into a, um, a picture like this here. Um, I'm not going into detail here, um, but it's quite interesting. Um, You have to read this from, from the, from the um, inner part, from the A uh, up to the D. The uh, A uh, would be, uh, it is on bio-causality, bio-causality, bio-causality. Uh, uh, A is the conscious, uh, consciousness and will, and then uh, uh, stepping one um, step outside, uh, B is subconscious psychic realm, C is the physical realm, and the D is the world of memory and action, so to say, the outside. Must be the outside. I'm not sure about that. Um, yeah. Apparently, Mittasch proceeds from the assumption of a free will, as the other uh, people did as well. Although a genuinely chemical notion as an approach to explaining this free will is lacking here as it is with Ostwald. 
And by the way, uh, Mitosh knew, of course, uh, this um, excursion to the free world discussion of, of Ostwald, but he says that this is quite um, um, weird in a way. It's not, not that strong, but quite weird, he said. Okay. Outro means I try to, um, to find some main points to um, maybe to bring uh, something home, so to say. Um, these are my uh, points. So, catalysis is at the same time uh, substantial and unchemical. And, uh, so, catalysts have something in common with um, the noble gases, by the way. Yeah, noble gases are, uh, of course, substantial, but not chemical. Yeah? Here, it's a little bit different, but they are Substantial, uh, of course, but they are unchemical because they take no, no part in, in the um, reactions. The second one, it can be interpreted in catalysis as actuation, that would be um, Mittasch, um, or as ex acceleration, that would be Ostwald's uh, way of chemical processes according to the respective reference uh, to open or closed system models. That's my interpretation that they are uh, using different models. And the third one, the question remains open whether all chemical processes have a catalytic core. It remains open, as far as I can see. Ostwald was one, who, who, one of those um, who, who just claimed that this might be the case, or is the case. And ontological determinism um, as some analytical philosophers assume, is questionable if real chemistry is co considered. Not only catalysis, but um, even other parts of chemistry are, are not that um, straightforward as some uh, analyt analytical philosophers uh, would, have it, would like to have it. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.
I will give one. Shall we start with the online question? Um, sure, yeah, yeah. So I have a, I have a question that came in from, from the chat. Yes. Um, Supposedly from Gary. It is from Gary. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, you've been warned. Um, so the, uh, uh, he asks uh, if you can address the role of uh, Fentoff in chemical dynamics. Uh, modern, modern approaches employ the concept of a reaction surface. Gibbs certainly used such concepts. Starting with Maxwell, fluctuations became an important part of the discussion of chemical processes. So. <coughs> Yes. Um, Gary, do you hear me? <laughs> Is it still on? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're live. You're good. You're live. So I'm not sure whether, whether I'm filmed. <laughs> okay. Yes, um, actually, I think the, um, the derivation of, of this um, uh, so, so called Arrhenius um, equation is, as you know, Gary, uh, uh, taken from Mantov. It was, it was just, uh, Arrhenius just took the, the Van Toff equation, as we call it, and then uh, put over his, his own ideas. Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm no um, expert of, of what uh, Van Toff said, but I know that Van Toff and um, Arrhenius and Ostwald were um, quite close in, in what they were doing. And uh, they even took up what is quite strange, uh, referring to Ostoy, took up the um, ionic um, description. So later they were, co were called the ionists, uh, the, the three of them. And this, this is quite strange because Ostoy uh, never um, liked to, to talk about um, to talk about particles that are, that have any charge. Um, and Maybe I'm maybe I'm um, too modern a chemist. I'm always thinking if, if the, the word ion is falling um, of, a, of a small particle that has a charge. But I think it's, it's not easy to, to be a phenomenologist uh, to be um, um, fighting against any atomism and um, at the same time being an ionist. So uh, uh, earlier I tried to, to write about this. Uh, so Ostwitz. In certain um, points, he's not really clear what he's um, claiming in a way. Although, Gary, I think you put that um, uh, time quite uh, often, uh, that, uh, par uh, that point quite often, um, um, this change to, to, um, to atomism is, I think, not really uh, reliable uh, if you look at the, at the, the historical development. Ostwald was not, at the end of his life, was not an atomist. He was, uh, maybe he was thinking about other things as well, but he still, in 17 and even, even in other um, books of him, he was still um, trying to bring forward the substantial way of looking at chemistry. Substantial means the way of looking at substances, and not uh, the way of looking into the, the microscopic uh, universe which is our doing today, if I'm talking in the chemist, um, chemistry um, and lecture room, I'm using the same things. And, but I'm, from, from time to time I try to tell them, people, uh, chemistry is about substance, it's not about uh, quarks, and not about electrons, or maybe even quantum. Quantum is okay, but you have to use it um, um, clearly. Okay, hopefully that was an answer. Just a moment. So there was a question. Questions here? Mm -hmm. Sure. It's less than a question than a, a puzzle. Uh, I've been thinking all the time between actuation and acceleration <laughs> during your talk. If I, if I try to understand the causal as different kind of causal process. If I try to modelize my impressions, uh, so it's more common than question. If I try to modelize it like a manipulation account, so relation between variables, causality is some kind of dependency between variables, actuation and acceleration will be almost the same. On the other hand, if I try to understand this as process cause, cause, causality, one, they will be quite different. 
Because if one is something, like you said, like intermediate reaction, it will be a, a process entering in another process, giving the product. But if it's acceleration, it's not an intermediate reaction. As a process, you will modelize process, some kind of constraint manipulating the, the field where the, the, the space space where the process arrives, the kind of things the process can do. And it will be something from outside. It won't be internal. But on the other hand, I, I see how the philosopher that is say causality is only relation between variables. This is metaphysics. We should not discuss this distinction. And people coming from a little, that wants to discuss a little bit about kinds of process, kind of mechanism, would say there's a big difference between the two. On the other hand, I, I have no idea which is the right one. Even today, with the atomic uh, hypothesis, I don't know. Uh, do you have some idea about how people can map this process to the atomic stuff happening? Because just, just to put the, each time I have an intuition in chemistry, since I'm not a chemist, Peter said to me all the time, it's much more complicated than that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so <laughs> when there's an arrow in that sense, there's always an arrow in that sense. And so so I'm uh, trying to because yeah, it's written like a, like you said at the beginning, it's a process from the beginning to the end. So there's the at least the illusion of direction there. That's still still you are right, it's still an open question because okay. uh, there is far too less probabilistic thinking, I think, in, in the philosophy of chemistry so far. And this is uh, what I, I haven't done it by myself as well. Um, but I think um, you, we have to th have to think about this, uh, those processes uh, as being probabilistic. There is, of course, some way of starting a, a reaction. The, some um, atoms or maybe maybe particles are just meeting and pushing it, each other. And if they if they come close, something happens that is that is um, maybe um, steered by quantum uh, processes, maybe. I think so. But uh, the whole thing, if you, if you look at, uh, at a chemis chemistry or chemical process, at a mixture of substances, uh, something is happening and you can just even follow it, looking at, at it. Uh, not, not every um, partners, reaction partners, are just um, doing the same thing at the same time. So some, some of those um, conditions are working out, uh, are yielding uh, the result, uh, yielding, so to say, the, the product, some not. And even, even uh, in between, they, they might uh, fall apart again. And what we have is the thermodynamics, is um, Goldberg and Waage, a theory, so to say, the it's not a theory, it's just a description of, of the results of measurement. Uh, of mass action. We can just measure all these um, uh, substances and then put them in proportion and then say now for, th for this and, 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 and that um, 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 surroundings or environment or ever temperature and so on, we can say that um, the equilibrium constant is such and such. And there's no, um, still no um, theory behind that. Uh, Ertel, uh, the group of, of Gerhard Ertel, they found out the, the, the mechanism, so to say, of this uh, ammonia production. They used um, um, surface analysis for this. So they, they tried to, to use every um, big machine you could, you could ha have. And then Max Planck Institutes in Germany, they have enough money to, to buy all these machines. And they found out what he is stating in that, in that picture. And this, and therefore, um, that was the Nobel Prize. And he, by the way, um, if you read German, I can send you a, a copy of this. He, by the way, wrote, I think, 10 years ago, wrote um, uh, an article, which I saw after the preparation of this one, which where he was um, referring to the, to the free will discussion of Oswald as, as well. So, those people are in, in those areas, um, they are sticking together. Yeah. So, um, uh, 
Yeah. Just to be to be clear, there is no answer for this. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you say it's unchemical, catalysts are unchemical. There's many ways to understand what unchemical yes. in your talk. Because if I see it as unchemical causally, so it's not a typical chemical causality. In that case, I would think about acceleration. I would say, okay, this acceleration in a certain sense, it's not part of the reaction, it's changing the, the environment of the reaction. But you probably wanted to say also that it's unchemical in other sense. So, so could you could you give more on unchemical? There's, there's some there are some places in, in chemistry uh, where, which are so to say described as chemistry, which are unchemical, which are not describing chemical at all, chemistry at all. We talked about the, the super heavy elements. Maybe you've heard of them, of those uh, things. Um, we, have, we have had the luck to, to, to be part of a, of a meeting of, of all the, the big uh, shots in that, in that field, um, the organizer and all these people. And they, many of them, many of those products, which are using, again, very large machines, are really thinking that they are, that they are referring to or, or presenting chemistry. If they are making uh, synthesizing, so to say, five or seven uh, cores of, of some very heavy um, atoms. Only the cores, not the atom and not any chemical um, um, process. And therefore, I would, I would say, I would tend to say this uh, super heavy element um, research is not chemical research. Okay, that's what I say. Those people are much more intelligent than me, maybe, maybe they have other arguments for this, this one. Um, unchemical is in a way um, a, a, a noble gas. Noble gases uh, we can only um, talk about or we can, we can only think about if we are, if we are using physical means. Um, the, the they were found by, by physical means, by uh, spectroscopy, of course. And uh, themselves, they, are, they have been there, they have been with us, they are still with us here. One percent of this uh, uh, air we are breathing is argon. Um, um, but how do we know? We only know, know it not chemically, but, but um, by um, the um, application of physical means. This is not, not, not um, uh, dangerous. But uh, it means that uh, chemical has to do with, uh, with the um, sens sensual, sort of sensual um, uh, grasp of, of certain changes, certain properties or dispositions, if you like. Therefore, um, the catalyst himself or itself is not, is not chemical because it's, it's just outside. Some of them, some of the people define it. Uh, catalysis um, um, right uh, in the same way uh, it's it's not just um, not just there it is there and we can we can measure it we can make it uh, Mitosh was very very uh, effective uh, and, uh, successful in making the right um, catalyst but uh, it's not uh, chemi chemical so to say if it's not a good uh, because it's not part of, um, of the whole process. On the other hand, it, of course it is um, part of the process, otherwise we could not, could not accelerate the process. So it's, maybe it's, not the, it's the wrong word. But what I w want, wanted to say is that they are, that they are special. They are typical, but, but they are not chemical. That's unlucky. Yeah, you include a word in your answer, you said disposition. So they don't have chemical disposition. So if you define chemical disposition in a certain way, these have this chemical disposition. However, they have an influence on how chemical disposition express themselves. 
I, I'm skeptic about this position. Peter no. likes this position. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I see how a dispositionalist have all the means to, to separate the three. I think what, the, uh, what, what I have read and what the, what the analytical philosophers are doing with, with, the, with this position is not, not what I'm looking okay. for. But sometimes um, the philosophers um, claim that, they, that, that one should use uh, uh, such terms as well. So, but uh, what is uh, really the case is that the chemistry begins with substances, any chemistry, even the chemistry um, that is uh, referring or ending up at uh, super heavy elements. All what they are doing, they are doing with these substances. And uh, they could not do it without them. And uh, if we are looking for processes, chemical processes, uh, I would say those are typical. They are changing the, the disposition or the uh, properties of, of the stuffy systems, substantial systems. It's always not easy to define words for this, because the word stuff is, I know that there are some meanings for it which are not so lucky. On the other hand, in German, you have this word, word Stoff, and this is pretty clear. Yes. I mean, most typically chemical, because this is something that doesn't happen in other uh, in other uh, processes, like in physics and so on. That's something that is there and technically not reacting actually has an influence to the point that we cannot say whether it's in or outside the system, but it has to be there. So I, I mean, to me, this is awfully chemical. Yeah. And that makes that makes your your work um, in in the philosophy of chemistry so important is that you are picking up a topic that is not a, a phenomenon that is not happening elsewhere as far as I know. And now about the unchemical, I was also struck with, by by the, the term, and I wonder if you're not mainly struggling with the fact that they are in the reaction but they are not reactants. Would that be the thing? Because being unchemical and yet they are substantial. I mean, they are substance. The, the, the platinum thing is, you can you can feel it, you can see it, and so I wonder if that's your that's the, the what brings you to say that it's unchemical. Because I mean, if I may add, I do not agree with the fact that a chemical or substance, a chemical substance, is only defined by its reactions. That's, that's my other thing. So for instance, you, you gave the example of noble gases. First off, some noble gases do actually react with fluoride. Yeah, well, they do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then, of course, then the problem is how do you define your, what is reaction and what is chemical property? Because you know, the Gary noted that in the chat, by the way. I want to give credit where credit's due. He also said, xenon hexafluoride in the yeah. chat. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, but anyway, so I, I wonder, I mean, I, I, I see what you're after, and I think this is struggling with words, but yeah. words cover mm -hmm. things and, and concepts, so I think it's worth discussing. Yeah. But that, that was just my... my mm -hmm. uh, yeah, maybe I'm, I was just... Um, Sticking unconsciously to to that uh, system uh, thinking, that uh, may maybe I was yeah. just uh, thinking of, of what happens in the system, mm -hmm. and um, then then I would be uh, the, the partner of Ostwald, of course, because he's, he's he was very good in describing mm -hmm. what what happens in the system, mm -hmm. in the inertial system, so to say, without any exchange of energy and of, of substance of stuff of matter. If you like the English term, I don't like it. Uh, and um, if, if you look at, at the catalyst, um, like Mittasch has seen it, I think, um, you are outside the system. The system is uh, the, the reaction, 
and you have to restrict it to the in the description as we restrict every description to equations um, for example and if you if you are looking for what uh, what the catalysts do catalysts are doing you have, you have to look outside and then they uh, come into but then it is not an inertial system anymore Maybe maybe the chemical refers to to what happens into the, in, in that system, and what comes from outside. Maybe even even um, some um, energy, some other energy, um, uh, is not part of the of the of the core of the chemical description. But you are right. Uh, not any not, not any chemical has some uh, chemical um, so, so to say dispositions. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are right, of course, since the, the beginning of the 60s, um, we know some um, compounds of, of uh, the noble gases, but uh, it still is, um, or it, it is a very um, um, exaggerated um, or inventive form of, of doing uh, substances, of, of making substances. But okay, this, this as well. But you cannot say because you have found one uh, exception, you cannot say um, um, the, uh, the, the, this is done by several colleagues. Um, the noble gases can have some um, chemical processes. This is not correct. You can say there are some exceptions, but um, to to put a, a sort of electronegativity. To, uh, to assign electronegativity to helium, by the way, well, for example, is simply incorrect. Yeah, but I think I think the point that's being raised really was also struck by the unchemical for exactly the same reasons, and so I was also trying to to figure out why a catalyst would be unchemical. I mean, a noble gas I could see as being unchemical because it doesn't tend to react with other substances, even though we can force them to form substances with different elements. But a catalyst is, is reacting all the time. I mean, it is part of the reaction. It typically reacts with one of the reagents to form some kind of intermediate that then will give you a final product and helps to thereby accelerate or facilitate the whole reaction. So they're very much part of the whole reaction. They, they, they are very active ingredients in the reaction. The only, the only thing that makes it a catalyst is that it, it isn't consumed by the reaction. So now it seems as if it, it, it would have to change and have to get consumed in order to be a chemical. Because otherwise I, 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 I'm also not quite following why this would be unchemical. It's a substance. It's part of the reaction. It's 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 yeah yes. So yeah. I, I admit it was it was a sort of, of try to to f uh, find a way to describe uh, the, the the two things mm -hmm. um, that is that is uh, that is there and it has some properties. It might might be a weight. It might have some some properties which are not um, necessary to describe for for this, uh, the process we are looking at. Um, but it's, it was unchemical, uh, I meant, because it's not, not, um, not part, because otherwise we would, we would put it in, into the, the equation. If it would be part, it would be put in the equation. Sure. We can, we we can put, put it in the equation. Yeah. We could be, could be, or we... Uh, you're not like conceding too much. You're conceding too much. You <laughs> answer very well the second time, sir. Mm. You're conceding like too much to Peter. People the like Alton, people like Alton, they are, was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they are, it depends, the whole thing, the whole discussion depends on which scope you have. Mm -hmm. if, you are, yeah. if you have the scope of, it, like you, of the sub-microscopic reality, um, it would be, of course, clear that there are happening some, some processes on, on that surface of the, of the uh, catalyst uh, making um, ammonia. But uh, the problem is, for me, the problem is how to get there. How do I know of this? Uh, Alfred was really inventive, not that, but uh, he, is, he, was, he was using um, large machines to find out uh, after 20, 30 years of work, hard work, find, 
found out that um, such process can be described as we have seen here. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm if I'm looking for for substances, um, I, I don't know that, that a, a good uh, a better term for this, but I would say this, that, that there's some some things, some processes are chemical and some not. Mm -hmm. If you say everything that might happen on, on the surface of, of a catalyst is, is, is a reaction, okay, you can even describe it in a, in a sort of equation, then I would say you end up with almost everything that is a, a chemical, can be a chemical reaction. And this is, but, but then I would ask why do we need any philosophy of chemistry? But this is not really correct. Is there someone else? Well, I have a question. I lead, I'm a little curious about how to account the uh, causal power of catalyst. Uh, mm. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> uh, and in terms of JDPL's causal models, how to, um, you know, the, it, it doesn't change the final stage of uh, chemistry action. Does it have any cost of power? Is cost of power is zero or not? It's not zero. Yeah, how, it doesn't change the final state. How to account the the cost of power? Is cost of power? But if it's present or not, I don't know if you're familiar with Julia Pro conception of uh, causality. Mm -hmm. but if not, I can answer. <laughs> uh, it's, it's typically if you associate the variables to the quantity of catalyst present, it yeah. will have causal effect. Mm -hmm. So it's why at the beginning I said, if you are in the manipulation account of causality, there's not much difference between acceleration and, um, and uh, actuation. Mm -hmm. However, if you are in the mind of a philosophy of chemistry, so you are a process, you have change yes. as, as causality, that's co that seems to be it seems to have two completely different interpretations of the causal power of the catalyst. Yeah, got that. But of course, they don't obviously adopt the manipulation account of causality, which is just there's a variable there, there's the variable there. If you change the variable there, something happens. Yeah, of course. If the catalyst is not there, the rate is completely different. So it's, it has causal power according to Julia Bohr. Mm. Then I'm a little curious how to count the causal power. You know, it just changed the speed of uh, chemical reaction. But in the framework of Julia Pearl, you cannot think causality without a model. Oh. So you always probe the causal relation between two variables. So if you don't have some such a thing as causal power or things that exist in the world, we don't know. But it's always okay on the final the rate of the final product. That's my own the rate the quantity of reactant. Is this thing participate causal causally active? Yeah, you can you just have to manipulate it. But it uh, but it it's not necessarily an accelerant. It could be diminishing, like you said. Yeah. But it has an effect. Yeah. Sorry. I think Oswald is still correct, uh, just to refer to refer to causal power. Oswald is still correct that the the end of the reaction is not caused by by any catalyst. It's just uh, an acceleration in his um, words, and I think this is this is not not really wrong. Uh, there is a, a catalyst cannot, so to say, change the direction of a, of, a, of the end of a reaction. Um, into a, into a totally other way. It can just, and this is this is I think normal chemistry at, at, at the moment. It can uh, it is able to to accelerate um, uh, the processes, but the the end of the process is determined. He says, and I think it's a quite quite a nice term for that, or quite correct term. Is uh, the, the end is determined by thermodynamics by the what we call the the um, and free entropy, and for any any part of, of those of those um, um, processes, Ertel is describing. For any part, you can you can uh, write a, a, a new um, equation 
you, you can uh, try to find out uh, what the thermodynamic, um, thermodynamical situation is. It's not uh, very easy because they all happen on, on, a, on, a, on a very small um, scale on the surface of, of the catalyst. You can, eat, uh, but you, you can princi in principle, can you, you can say all these um, processes are chemical reactions as well because there happens something. Uh, nitrogen or, or uh, hydrogen are just uh, sticking or just uh, colliding with, with, with the, let's say this is a catalyst, uh, colliding with this um, surface. And then on any ground um, are just held for a certain moment, for some milliseconds maybe, are held. And if they are, if they're happy to be close to uh, another a partner for the reaction, they are just um, coming together. And this is much more, much more complicated than we, we uh, describe in, in the chemical reaction, but any of those, of those processes you can describe in, in steps of chemical reaction equations. And for any of those steps, you will have a sort of causal power. And this causal power will always be, um, when chemists uh, describe it, always be something that uh, we would call, the chemists would call, um, free energy, free entropy. Although we might be not possible to measure it. So, so let me try again about the young chemical. <laughs> 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 At one point I thought, I, okay, now I understand what he's saying. Yeah. And I, after that you answer to these guys and <laughs> you can see too much and now I'm confused. So, so I thought for you, what is typically chemi chemistry, it's not just substance, it's substance transformation. So I thought for you that what is chemistry and physics is something else. Okay. So in that sense, you have the notion of system that you introduced, that okay, I have the reactant, and I want to see how this substance transform. And in that case, the catalyst, even if it's very important that it's there, is not chemical, because the catalyst is a constraint on on the, the chemical process. But if you say, <laughs> and you can see to these guys, that eh, okay, it could be also substance and not transformation of substance chemistry. Now I don't know why the catalyst is not here in, 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 in chemistry. But if you, if you stick to your gun, at the beginning you were insisting on the, on the equation. That if you stick to their gun, that chemistry is typically the essence of chemistry is substance transformation. Now I buy catalysts that are very important, but they are not chemical. But but I'm not sure it's what you want to say. So, so. I'm not sure whether, whether we should. Um, Brigitte was was uh, claiming uh, or was saying a very important thing because you said um, catalysis is is. Um, of course, part of chemistry, and for you maybe a very, very important part. Um, I'm not sure whether I, I would I would like to exclude um, um, catalysis from from chemical processes. Maybe we are just beginning to. I am just beginning to think about this. Um, substances are, are, are having some some very basic. Um, properties which we can normally measure quite well but um, and, and there are some some um, intermediate places so to say or, or transformal uh, areas um, where it is it will not be it will, will, will become not easy to, to say is, is that um, chemical or not Oswald by the way um, was pretty sure he said even um, the evaporation of something, is a, is a chemical process because okay. because I have once I have a, I have a sort of liquid maybe and after after the evaporation it's it's gas so it's only one but but a very important uh, change of, of um, um, disposition also yeah because because he's he's starting from thermodynamics that's why yeah. if 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 you define chemistry from Starting from thermodynamics, then of course 
water liquid and water gas or yes. two different species. That's what I'm doing in a yes, way. Yes, that's what you're doing. No. Phases and, and substances are the most important thing. And if we, if we look closely, almost any um, or every um, chemical process is um, describable in, in a, or is just connected to that to the uh, picture. Yeah, that's true. So this was very much a German story. Uh, I mean, German guys, Oswald, for that, and so on. I was wondering if there was any discussion in other um, language hmm. or other philosophies. Can I jump in right there with something from Gary Patterson online? There's a no perfect follow-up. Um, who also mentioned he had to go. Unfortunately, he's no longer he's no longer on the other end of the chat. But he mentioned that in the uh, mid 19th century, John Mercer discussed catalysts extensively at the British Association. Ah, uh, but what? Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not um, today. I, I was not referring to the no, to, no, the, I, to I, the prehistory of, of catalysis. Um, I can only recommend to read. Um, uh, the books, there are quite a few books uh, of Alvin Mittasch again. Mm -hmm. okay. um, uh, I'm asking the question because um, uh, philosophers are, I mean, philosophies are also context added, and of course, the German. Oh, this is the ghost of the well, well, Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a noble no, ghost. I'm, so I just wonder if, by contrast, you know, in other linguistic areas, the, the discussion would be um, coming from other kind of philosophy perspectives. You're right, but, but on the other hand, Berzelius was not, was not a German, yeah. uh, but, but you're but right. Very much German. It has been, or it has been quite a lot of, of uh, German, or at least German-speaking people. Berzelius was, was fluent in German. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was clear it was normal for the Swedish people. <laughs> For the, for the damage as well. Um, and, um, I haven't um, come, come across um, any other um, important person in that, in that um, interpretation because I think, um, and, and to be sure, uh, Mitash in his, in his um, descriptions is, is an outsider. He's, he's not, um, he, despite in, in, uh, in, in his claim, that it is a pity that, that the philosophers are not um, doing very much um, philosophy of chemistry, I think because they do not know chemistry. And, but uh, that does not mean that the chemists who are interested, uh, who are interested in, in philosophy uh, do it right. Uh, we are just um, still in, in, a, in the start of, of, of a sort of um, um, a professional philosophy of chemistry. Maybe. Although we have 30 years behind us, um, Mitash was um, writing on that. There's uh, another, uh, because you were maybe interesting for you, uh, a lady, uh, Gertrude Rucker. She, she, she was Swiss. Uh, uh, Gertrude Rucker wrote a, a large book on, on the history of, of catalysis. So, yes, she comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, at that time, not everything in, in the in natural sciences, but many. But on the other hand, um, I'm still, uh, at the moment, I told you, I'm, I'm looking for the, the acidity um, development, and therefore it is really, really um, um, impressive how many people from, from that small country of Denmark uh, and, and maybe a very wonderful town, but um, a small town compared to other towns like, like Brussels or Paris, Berlin, uh, Copenhagen. Um, you, you, will, you will speak of a Copenhagen school in uh, four or five years. Copenhagen school is not Heisenberg and, and uh, Bohr, but uh, that will be um, um, Brandstedt and all these people. Mm -hmm. So um, just just to, to to comment on uh, so that that you don't think I just left out all the others. Mm -hmm. 
And I try, I try to read the originals. I even try to read Danish. Swedish. I know this. Still, if you are not using the, like, the English, uh, it's not so easy. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, there is no, um, no other uh, sort of like giant uh, that I uh, just left out. But you're right, it's still, it's a really interesting question uh, whether this uh, chemical I used there, this notion, um, is uh, really correct. And maybe if I can, maybe more like a comment in, in trying to move from the history to modern day chemistry, because I mean, this very much felt like a historical talk, and, and the story kind of ended with Ostwald and Mitash, which, you know, is, is 100 years ago. Since then, chemistry has continued and developed and, and learned much more about the whole phenomenon of catalysis. And I was struck by the, the, the claim that it's still very much a trial and error game. And it's true, I remember as a student we would learn about catalysis, but, but I, I, I don't recall really learning about here's the theory of catalysis and then you can apply it in any kind of situation. Um, so I wondered, where are we now? Do we have a theory of catalysis? Do you think there's just one theory or do we need many theories? Like what is catalysis? Is it just one phenomenon or is it maybe multiple phenomena? And some of which are better counted in terms of actuation, others are more accountable in, in terms of acceleration. I mean, may, maybe we're trying to fit everything into this one kind of beautiful, simple theory, but it's something that is much more multifaceted and, 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 and diverse. Um, but yeah, where, where are we now? This, this, this would be my big question. Also, given the discovery of enzymes, which is maybe the, the other big category of, of catalytic action, um, I'm sure there, there must have been a, a lot of developments and, 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 and questions surrounding enzymatic action. I don't think uh, the latter of the, the possibilities you were um, talking about, latter means um, that we have at the moment, it's just a, suggest a suggestion or maybe a, a, a cruel idea, that we have, that we will have maybe um, a sort of pluralism uh, even in that field. We were part of, the, of our workshop in, in March on acidity. Um, and that there I learned, I, I wrote it together with, with, a, with, a, with a colleague from, from Tartu, I wrote an article on pluralism in chemistry, where we, where we said uh, chemistry is pluralistic, that is in the headline. And I think um, that might be the same. Um, in acidity, if I'm asking around here, many of you would say, yes, I know, this is real. I have been in, in the laboratory, we measured the pH value and so on. Okay, this is, of course, uh, what, what refers to acidity. Even this is not uh, really correct, but, but there are uh, other meanings for this word, acidity, acids and bases. Um, and not all of them, I would say, are making, making sense. Um, I'm, I'm critical with, with those um, um, modernistic descriptions. If I'm, it depends, uh, the answer to your question depends on who, uh, who you are asking. If you are asking um, Jeffrey Seaman, maybe you have been here. I can't see the names unless they post in chat, so <laughs> Sorry. I, can't, I can't spy on our audience. <laughs> um, Jeff, Jeff Seaman, a, a very um, modern chemist, uh, American chemist, he um, published an article and there they, they claimed acidity, or an acid is a, is a substance that, is, that has some quantum chemical properties, what is positions. I, I cannot, cannot even say what, what exactly. And other people would say it's um, an acid is a, is a substance that it makes something with the electrons in that. So, and um, I, as, as, a, as a maybe a traditionalist, I would say what Bronstedt said is correct. I would, would, not, would not exclude all the others, but I would say this is the, the point of view I'm starting with Bronstedt, because it has some connections to what I, what I can imagine and what I can feel, what I can see sense in the laboratory, which I can measure as well. 
even the, the, the measurement of, of um, Lewis acids and Lewis bases is not possible. So therefore, in that, in that way, I would, I would be um, handling um, descriptions, uh, modern descriptions of the catalyst. Of course, I'm pretty sure the more theoretically um, oriented um, researchers will have a sort of um, quantum chemical description of catalysts. Of course, why not? Because you can um, um, apply quantum chemistry, quantum mechanics to everything. You can. You know this. You have learned it. I learned it as well about 30 years ago. Maybe this is the point. That the more younger people coming from a fresh um, uh, education think different. But on the other hand, I think Mitash and, and Oswald say, say or did say some quite right uh, things. Good. I think we're getting ready for a question. Any last question? But I will have to think about your, mm -hmm. your point with uh, the, so to say, equation. Actuation and acceleration. Yes. Yes. That's cool. Good. Well, then, uh, join me in thanking class for everything. <laughs>